And good morning. Welcome to Bradford and Brooks. And no, I am not Brooks. I am Milt, but I'm in here with uh, Ms. Margie Bradford and our guest this morning, uh, John Snow, uh, district or not, he is candidate for a magistrate, District 5. Good morning, John, and good morning, Margie. Good morning. Glad to be in here with you this morning and a great show today, I think. Yep. Uh, Well, we got a special guest, of course, John Snow. And uh, John, this is your opportunity to tell the people uh, who you are. Who is John Snow? Well, thank you all for having me. I appreciate it, and good morning. Um, so who is John Snow? That's a great question. Most people will know me uh, from my law enforcement career here in Nelson County. I spent mm-hmm. several years with the Sheriff's Department uh, here, retired in 2019 uh, as a detective with the Sheriff's Department. But now currently my wife and I operate and own Triple uh, S Farms and Dog Boarding up in Chaplin where we live on our farm. Um, we've been doing that since pretty much since I retired. Mm-hmm. So. Well, tell us a little bit about your family. I mean, so, you know, Nelson County is a family county. Yeah, People want to yeah. know who you are and and what family you belong to. Well, pretty much all of my family lives right up in Chaplin, and we pre- we have, for the most part, for the last several years. Uh, my dad's originally from Bullock County, um, so my mom and dad are Mike and Kathy Snow. They live right couple doors down from me my brother Joseph Snow lives uh, right there next door to me on the on the farm next to me uh, and then my wife and I Laura uh, we've been married for I better not get this wrong um, you better not <laughs> 23 years this year uh, so we're, we're working on 23 in June and then we have five boys uh, two of which are still in the home uh, 13 getting ready to be 14 and 15 be 16 in December and then uh, Devin my son who's 19 is uh, is in the army at Fort Campbell I've been there for the last year and a half or so uh, and then my other two boys one lives in Vine Grove and one lives in uh, uh, Somerset yeah and I just realized how 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 long I've known you <laughs> it's uh, been a minute because when you said Devin is 19 I'm like wait what yeah like, you remember wow. calling over when he was when she went into labor uh, probably yeah, it's, uh, it, it's it's been a while yeah it's been a while just turn, he just I'm sorry he just turned 20 uh, this cool. year, this month. So yeah, that, that's an important. But don't get that one wrong either. Uh, John, what, uh, in, what, what made you want to run this time for office? So what, what impelled you to run? Yeah. So I've I've always had an interest in politics. If you ever looked at my Facebook page, you probably know that. Um, and so, but during my law enforcement career, it was not appropriate for me to run for office uh, for various different reasons. Obviously, running for magistrate, working for the sheriff's department, uh, is not uh, is not permitted. And I felt like I was working for good bosses, and I didn't want to run against mm-hmm. any of them. So running for sheriff wasn't an option at the time. Uh, so when I retired, Laura and I discussed that uh, I would potentially run for office for either for sheriff or for magistrate. Um, and we like Raymond. We think he's done a great job, and we don't want to. I didn't want to run against him. Uh, quite frankly, if he's doing a good job, I want to leave him there. And so it, magistrate, it was. And so we've decided mm-hmm. that uh, we wanted to be a part of the. Uh, the operation of the local government hopefully make some positive changes and keep some good things that are going on going on. Well, what qualities do you have that you think you bring to the table that that would convince the voters to vote for you rather than someone else? Sure. Yeah, so um, working in law enforcement gives you a, a very different view uh, of a lot of different things. Conflict resolution is a big thing. Uh, being forced to work with people that are not necessarily in your wheelhouse mm-hmm. uh, because you're put into a situation where you don't know people and so you're you're there to work out whatever disagreement you, they're having and having to work with both parties and moderate both parties I think is a good attribute to bring to local government working with different kinds of people different um, mm-hmm. maybe people from different political affiliations different backgrounds uh, being able to see different points of view uh, and, and come to the table with a uh, maybe a moderate view of coming together on those kinds of things. Uh, when I was a captain with the sheriff's department, I worked with the budget, uh, and so I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with local government budgets. I was responsible for writing several parts of the sheriff's department budget at that time uh, and keeping up with where they were and where we are with our mm-hmm. spending and those kinds of things. Um, 
I wrote several grants when we were when I worked at the sheriff's department for various different things, and so uh, grant writing is something that's inside my wheelhouse. And I think it's I know that we get several grants here in Nelson County uh, to help support the local government. I'm not sure that we get all that we could mm -hmm. um, without looking into what else is available on the federal side, but potentially could be involved in grant writing for the mm -hmm. county and helping out with that. So. I think a little bit of the, that familiarity with a lot of that's going to be very important this time more so than than usual because this time you know for the last 20 plus years we've had the constant of a judge executive mm -hmm. next year we're going to have a, a brand new judge executive yeah. and potentially some new magistrates so having that familiarity with those kinds of uh, processes and issues sure. I think is very important well and with Eric vacating the seat to run for judge executive we will definitely have a new magistrate there uh, and and I, I think probably you'll see a couple more seats change. Um, I believe uh, Bernard Ice is, is retiring, mm -hmm. so that's another yeah. seat that's going to change. And working for the Sheriff's Department, uh, I often attended the physical court meetings, uh, worked with uh, Judge Watts on a few things, and, and was just familiar with how the physical court operates as far as uh, budgeting and those kinds of things. So. Very good. And I guess if we kind of go uh, maybe – what do you think are some of the the top three challenges that the, the county is facing you know in the next few years and as far out as maybe 20 years well right now we're doing really well financially uh, um, if, you, if you've had an opportunity to look at the the budget uh, we're doing really well but unfortunately it does appear that our country is probably uh, headed in the direction of a bit of a downturn on the economy maybe even uh, a serious downturn on the economy which is going to affect uh, Nelson County as well as it does any other uh, local and state and, and national government level. So I think we're going to need people in there that, that can rise to that challenge and find creative ways of funding things and make decisions that are going to be difficult to make. On There may be cuts that need to be made. There may be uh, funding that needs to be withdrawn in order to, to help keep a balanced budget and not put us in, the, uh, in a bad way financially. Uh, I, there's a few things that are coming up that are going on. I know there's been a lot of talk about a, the potential for a, a, a sports complex or uh, something like that. And mm -hmm. I think one of the things that we're that I have heard over and over again over the years in Nelson County is that there's just not much here for the youth, for the young um, f 14 to 20 crowd. Uh, I know Bargetown uh, put in the skate park kind of as a somewhat of a solution to that and they, they have the public pool but we have Dean Watts Park but there we're, we're also losing our movie theater uh, which is one of the big entertainment places for the middle school and high school age kids and so I think attracting businesses that are youth oriented is going to be a focus in the in the future if we want our children to stay in Nelson County and to come back to Nelson County with their children um, this, the sports complex is an interesting thing. I've heard a few different uh, takes on it uh, with regard to government funding or potential, potentially the government helping a private entity open one mm -hmm. uh, with some tax incentives and those kind of things. And so it'll be interesting to see the take from the other magistrates and the new judge as to how to move forward with that. But I definitely think that that should be a priority for Nelson County. So uh, if you were to get into office and let's say the economy does kind of stabilize and it's not as bad as we think it may get, uh, would you be, uh, could you support putting some resources behind um, making something like that happen? Oh, absolutely. The question isn't whether we support it. The question is how we support it. You know, are we going to, are we going to have a government facility that's run by the government or are we going to uh, in other ways facilitate having a private entity a company start something like that and help them to start it uh, kind of like what we do with the bourbon industry when we're when we're giving them tax incentives and things like that to start new new enterprises here in Nelson County uh, I think I think that's probably the way I would go but I would need to look at the numbers and look at what it's going to cost to maintain it and look at what it costs for employees and those kind of things that are normally absorbed if it's a private organization that's running it. So. Uh, if there were uh, changes that you would like to make if you were a magistrate and um, uh, can you uh, tell me any you know what they would be mm -hmm. I mean are there things that you're looking uh, to change or improve 
Um, the, the one thing, and, and I can't speak, you know, countywide, but uh, the one thing that I'm hearing from a lot of people in District 5 is they want a better line of communication with their magistrate. Um, and I, I, would, I would say that not just being able to call you on the phone, but they want to know when things like that are going on, when there are potentially big decisions to be made in the, by the physical court. And a lot of them, don't, they don't have time to go to the physical court meetings. You know, they, those meetings are, are generally in the mornings and they're usually, you know, during the work week. Um, and so if, if we could find other ways of informing people, better use of social media, um, yeah, Jimmy Clemens does a great job, or I'm sorry, Jimmy Clemens, uh, Jimmy Higdon does a great job at sending out information when there's stuff going on on state level. He, he fires out an email pretty much every week letting you know what's going on with the bills that he's looking at, letting you know what's going on with the Senate. And I think we could implement something like that pretty easily. And then what I, the other thing I would like to do if I'm in there is I would like to have uh, a monthly meeting in the district somewhere in the district where I just go in and sit down and let people come to me with their concerns and if they want to uh, you know that way it just gives them another way to communicate with their magistrate that they don't currently have right, at one point in time years ago I believe there used to be a meeting that was at night correct mm -hmm. I think one there's two meetings a month one in the morning one in the evening would you be in support of maybe moving one to, a, to an, an evening slot Oh, absolutely. I think we, we need to have at least one of those monthly meetings that is convenient for the public to attend uh, because we're asking them for more input. We're asking them for more participation, but we have to, we have to do things that facilitate that participation. And, and one thing, if there, if there are or is a silver lining to the COVID pandemic, it has taught us how to um, work with technology. Um, you know, when we had to Zoom, uh, meetings were held by Zoom or WebEx. Uh, and I think, you know, for me personally, I believe that, you know, the, the, the Zoom meetings and then the meeting that the, the city council would have when they would broadcast it on their YouTube channel, I thought that was an amazing thing. Because then if you can't get out, you're shut in or you're at whatever, yeah. you just can't be there. You can still watch it or watch it later. Mm -hmm. I thought it was an amazing thing. And, and I personally am an in-person person. But uh, I can certainly see we can definitely broadcast it on multiple uh, different media sources easily. It's easily. We do it. Our church does it on three different things with just a minimal amount of technology. So it's not as though it would be difficult for us to do. Uh, and I think that's a great way people can, can go back and review it, watch it on YouTube if, it, you know, when, if they upload it. Um, you know, doing Facebook Live is a good one because a lot of people are, have the capability to be on social media during the day. And so, yeah, absolutely. Uh, at, in reference to, uh, you know, our, our housing problems, because we do have housing problems here, uh, the lack of sanitary sewers uh, prevents additional housing from, I mean, uh, being done in the county. So what do you think that the county government can do to uh, help that, I mean, with extending these sewer lines to, so that more housing can Well, I think it, it, it is a, um, that's a, a multifaceted question. Because what, what affects me in rural Nelson County, right, um, doesn't necessarily uh, pertain to a sewer line. Um, we have regulations that say you have, you know, your, your property has to be able to absorb so much water and that kind of thing. Otherwise, you have to put in additional resources. Um, you know, the, the expense of putting in sewer lines is, is pretty extensive. Um, I think if we're going to build affordable housing on available land, uh, we're going to have to support that. We're going to have to give them the resources yeah. to do it. Now, does that mean that the builders uh, can't nec wouldn't necessarily have to foot some of the bills for that if they're developing a subdivision or something of that yeah. nature? But, of course, as local government, one of our jobs is to promote those industries, and we want to, them to be able to build those subdivisions on available land and, uh, and be able to do so as cost-effective as possible. But by the same token, like you said, we, we have to be sanitary about it, and the, the availability for that. But you'd be willing uh, to, to commit increase. county funds for us. Um, uh, I, I think you in would, that area. If if the, I think if the if the budget is doing well, and we are able to support those businesses in that way, that's fine as long as we have a commitment 
from the from the developer of the subdivision if it's a subdivision um which i assume it would be right. to, to yeah, need that right. kind of stuff and so you, you know i would i would expect them to have as much of a commitment into it as as the county would for sure but definitely would not be opposed to uh the county funding some of that project okay. yeah. and housing is a is a major issue right now and, and the word affordable i'm not even sure if that even kind of plays into it anymore it's the the housing market is just well, you know, being a real estate agent, you would know better than I, but um, certainly it, we, we've seen the property values uh, skyrocket. I'm not sure that's sustainable. Uh, I think there's, there's probably uh, a, a leveling out there to be had somewhere. But definitely, uh, we are, I've, in talking to anybody that I know that's in real estate, they're having difficulty finding houses to sell, and people are finding, having difficulty finding houses to buy. So, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, they can be gone in a matter of hours. I mean, mm -hmm. so, and if we um, want to bring people to Nelson County, they got to be a, have a place to live. Absolutely. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back with more with uh, John Snow right after this here on Bradford and Brooks. But when we just come out and say it, it feels like it falls a bit flat. So instead, we're going to have someone else say it. Because for some reason, when a random person talks about how great something is in a commercial, it's more believable. I saved with a Progressive Home and Auto Bundle. And there you have it. I mean, I'm not sure why she's more believable than me, but either way, you get the point about the saving. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Discount not available in all states or situations. This is an American Red Cross blood donation alert. We are currently facing a severe blood shortage during this coronavirus outbreak. Healthy blood and platelet donors are asked to make an appointment to give now. Donating blood is safe and can help save lives. Cancer patients, accident victims, and so many others continue to need life-saving blood. Please schedule your appointment now by visiting Red Cross Blood org or by calling 1-800-RED-CROSS. You can make a difference. Great news from Rocket Mortgage. You could unlock more cash than you realize from your home's equity with a cash-out refinance today. In fact, in the last year, average home values have gone up nearly 20%. That means you could unlock thousands of dollars. And with Rocket Mortgage, you could unlock all that cash in less than three weeks. But you've got to act right now before rates go up because nobody knows how long these low rates will last. Put your hard-earned money to work. Make your life better. Build a home office. Remodel your kitchen. Or simply save that cash for a rainy day. Today's rate on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage is 3.25%, 3.48% APR, so you can lock in a great low monthly payment. When you're looking to unlock the cash in your home, Rocket can. Call 8338-ROCKET today or go to rocketmortgage.com to get started. That's 8338-ROCKET or go to rocketmortgage.com. Rates current as of 12-12-21. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender license in all 50 states. Nonetheless, consumeraccess.org, number 3030. Call 800-490-1233 for disclosures and cost information. Hometown Radio, WBRT. Welcome back to the Bradford and Brooks Show. Live on WBRT, 97.1 FM and 1320 AM. Also... Streaming live at WBRTCountry.com. Hey, good morning. Welcome back to Bradford and Brooks. Milt Spalding here with you, uh, sitting in for uh, Jim Brooks this morning. I'm in with Margie Bradford, and we have John Snow in the studio. And uh, on the break, I was telling you I was in a neighboring, somewhat of a neighboring city last night. And one thing I did notice, and it was like citywide, the roads were absolutely horrendous. I mean, just for a, a city larger than Bardstown, I expect better roads. Right. And they were terrible. And I know that's been kind of a, a, an, an area of contention up, up in the, the 5th District as the paving up there. Um, and, of course, the American Rescue Plan or Rescue Plan Act funds are, are aimed at infrastructure. Do you think that... Uh, um, I think I got some of my questions kind of combined here, but are you satisfied with how the blacktop money in uh, the fifth district is being spent to uh, or maintain roadways? Yeah, that's a, that's always um, a, a, a big issue for magistrates. And as I've been around going door to door and talking to people, uh, and, and certainly that is one of the big concerns that I hear is my road needs to be paved or my street needs to be paved. Um, or, or they disagree with a road or a street that got paved. Uh, I think we've done pretty well 
uh, at dividing out the money and getting done what needs to be done. I, there's always going to be somebody that comes up short on it because their road didn't get uh, paved. I think one of the things that we need to do for as far as to keep it uh, equal is to look at some of the ones that haven't been paved and how long it's been since they've been paved. And then, of course, we have to get out there and get boots on the ground and look at them and see what kind of shape they're in because a road or street that gets minimal amount of traffic, a cul-de-sac that has three or four houses on it, is not going to need paved nearly as awesome uh, as excuse me as often as one that gets a lot of through traffic. Uh, and then the other thing is there's there seems to be a lot of confusion. You talked about this a little bit at the break about what's a county road and what's a state road. And some people that are, are maybe saying the county's not paving their road, it's not necessarily up to the county to pave that road. Uh, if it has a number, then it's a state road, not a county road. And they're, they're kind of barking at the wrong tree, basically, with that. Um, but I, I think so far we've done well with it. I, I'm hoping that the... Um, money that the state is receiving for uh, infrastructure will come down a little more heavily for us and we can do some roads that have been several years since they've had any patchwork or any paving done to them but um, but that is definitely one of the chief concerns that i hear i think brad and, and lee have done a done a good job of trying to uh, identify these areas that do need the space or the, the the repairs but again like you said it's it's a you've got to get out there you got to have the funding to, to take care mm -hmm. of it and you've got to uh, a lot of roads that need it and, and i'm sure they they feel their fair share of complaints but it really it really falls mostly on the magistrates to take those calls and to go out and actually uh not that we're an expert in paving, but to look at it and say, okay, you know, call Brad up and say, hey, can you send somebody out to look at it? It looks like it might need to be repaired or whatever. And then from what I'm from what I'm hearing during the physical court meetings in, in, in not just our county, but other, in other counties, is that asphalt is just astronomically expensive right, right. now. And so that money is not going to go nearly as far as it did not even two, three years ago uh, as it did then. And so, I, I, unfortunately, you're going to see probably more money spent for less asphalt on the ground uh, mm -hmm. on these roads. But that's just the nature of the price of things going up. So are you going to kind of uh, keep track of this or, you know, the miles in your district? I remember when Dixie Hibbs was mayor. I mean, she would drive around town and look for potholes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, I, I will need to get out more yeah. as uh, since I retired. I don't. I haven't gotten off the farm much. Mm -hmm. um, a, as we are campaigning, we are uh, looking at the roads that we're on and making note of ones that are in ill repair. Mm -hmm. um, and even if I don't get elected, I can pass that information on to the person mm -hmm. that does. So, uh, if one of the other candidates ends up being the magistrate, I can always pass that that information mm -hmm. off to them. But. Uh, and, but I think it's really up to everybody. It, it's mm -hmm. up to the whole community to to do that and to be realistic about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know about the availability of the equipment and right. the cost of the, the asphalt right. and the employees to come out and do it and just be patient uh, with them as they try to get those things done. And I'm not sure what it's like for the county, but I know for the state, they like many other industries are uh, they have a worker shortage, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. they just don't. You know, you you're not getting as much bang for your buck on the asphalt now. You don't have the people to actually get out and lay as much of it as you, as you need, and that's kind of a, a problem. I, I would assume probably in the county as well, but maybe not as as bad as with the state. But uh, you just be be patient. Yeah, work on it. I haven't I haven't heard that. We we generally have a pretty loyal. Uh, employee base in Nelson County. Most of the, the employees for Nelson County have worked there for a long time. Sometimes we even have second generation uh, employees. So mm -hmm. I haven't heard that it's possible, but um, of course, but, uh, with the longtime employees, the other thing you have to worry about now is when they start to retire, right. and you've got to replace yeah. them. So hopefully, talk retirement. <laughs> that doesn't uh, that doesn't happen. But are there any other uh, things that you? think you could bring to the table for uh, being a, as magistrate mm -hmm. that maybe it's not being done now not through neglect or anything but any other areas that you see uh, that you think needs to be have more attention paid mm -hmm. to um, well I, I don't want to criticize Eric or any of the other magistrates um, I, I would say that I, I think the biggest thing is being even-tempered uh, mm -hmm. I don't rush to anger 
Um, I, I'm not a rush to judgment. I'm I'm a pretty good investigator. So if somebody mm -hmm. comes to me with an issue, uh, I'm willing to investigate um, and think outside the box on on ways to solve it rather than just throwing a new tax at it uh, mm -hmm. or, or throwing money at it. Um, certainly, I feel like there are there are creative ways that we can do these things um, without necessarily taxing people who are already feeling like they're taxed to death. Um, the other thing I would say is that there are there are a lot of people out there that that feel like that Nelson County has for a long time been under the same leadership for a long time and a long time. Um, I don't necessarily know that that was a bad thing or a good thing. I think with the opportunity that we're going to have as a new physical court for the most part and a new judge executive, we can hopefully um, we can we can put that to rest and and make some people feel at ease about their local government and how it's being run. Mm -hmm. uh, I really I'm I'm huge about transparency. I want people to know what's going on and I want them to care about what's going on. I want people to, I've been very advocate uh, driven about voting. I want people to get out and vote. Whether you vote for me or you vote for somebody else, your, your voice should be heard. And I want people to be involved in what's going on in Nelson County and what's being proposed. And I think that, commu that key communication is the way to go with that. Getting that stuff out to people and giving them an opportunity, even if they don't say anything to you about it, mm -hmm. even if it's not something they care about. Because let's, let's be honest. Not everybody's going to care about every issue, right? If if I don't have children in the school system or I'm of an age where my kids are grown and gone and my grandkids don't go to the school system, then that's not going to be a key issue for me, right? Uh, education. But roads might or uh, some other type of infrastructure or something to do with my age group. And so being able to listen to each one of those and to get that information out to those people, even if it doesn't pertain to them, but give them an opportunity to weigh in on it because quite frankly, even if you don't have kids that go to school here, you pay school taxes here. Uh, and so you should at least care how your money's being spent. Uh, you should at least care how your, your local taxes are being spent and what the potential is for spending them on a sports complex or sewer infrastructure or affordable housing. Whatever that issue is, you might have lived in the same house for the last 70 years, so that doesn't necessarily matter to you, but it probably matters to you how much money the county is going to spend on it. Uh, and so getting that information out to them, I think, is, is vitally important. And in an age where we have so many different uh, forms of media available to us, there's just no reason not to. So. Yep. Speaking of uh, the potential for having a whole, almost a whole new fiscal court uh, this coming year, uh, current uh, Nelson County Judge Executive Dean Watts has warned that future fiscal courts and judge executives will have uh, to address the need for more revenue. And one of those uh, mechanisms for that would be uh, maybe a possibly an increase in the, uh, the occupational tax. And of course, we've had a scare here recently with proposed legislation that would alter the, the bourbon tax. The tax. That would have taken about what, about $8 million away from the county and the, the different areas of the county. What, what are your thoughts on that uh, possibly increasing the occupational tax? And I think it's, it's remained the same since yeah. its introduction yeah. back mm -hmm. in the early 90s, right. early 80s. Well, I, I would think that my first thought is that I want to I want to explore every single opportunity available to us before we decide to raise a tax. Um, you know, when you look at what we in here in the United States pay in taxes, uh, it's just an absorbent amount of money. Anybody who works a government a, a paycheck job can see it coming out of their paycheck. And if you're no longer in a paycheck job like me and you're running a business, you see it at the end of the year or quarterly when you pay those taxes. And so. The last thing we want to do is add an additional burden onto our citizenship. Now, I can't say you would never raise taxes because that would be irresponsible of me. There certainly are circumstances where you would have to if you if there are infrastructure, if there are things that you just have to fund as a go local government, and there are things that we have to fund. Uh, there are things about that we have to fund by federal law, by state law. There just are, and so if we run into a shortage in that, then we're going to have to figure out how to make that shortage up, and it may involve increasing taxes. Um, now, I will say that I've heard some talk about like specialized taxes and localized taxes for special projects. Um, you know, I, I'm not in favor of that. Uh, I'm not in favor of adding additional taxes on to pay for things. Uh, you know that projects that individual people or maybe individual groups of people want. I think if we are responsible with our budget. 
uh, and perhaps we need to find places to cut spending if that's if that's necessary uh, if we have um, areas in our budget and I'm still going through the budget for Nelson County it's about almost 50 pages so it's a little bit mm -hmm. to wade through and uh, trying to figure out but there certainly in any government agency I've ever been in there's been areas where where well, I felt like there was absorbent spending in one area or another and I'm sure that Nelson County is no different uh, and so the, the answer may be cutting spending in those other areas to continue to fund the things that you have to fund at 100%. Uh, John, give us some uh, examples of your personal leadership. I mean, mm -hmm. things that you have done in the community or maybe that would show your personal leadership. Sure. I was uh, with uh, Troop 721 here in Bargetown. I was the scoutmaster for several years, assistant scoutmaster before that. Uh, had several boys uh, under our leadership, Eagle Scout, my son being one of them. Um, I guess my the being a business owner and not going under yet, <laughs> thankfully. Um, <laughs> as even with the uh, closures during COVID, we managed to stay uh, stay ahead of it and, and budgeting and things was a little bit more difficult then. But um, but we we made it through, and so I think that's one. Um, I've been a leader in uh, just about every church I've been in. Uh, I'm a deacon uh, ordained at uh, Little Union Baptist Church some years ago now at uh, Chaplain Baptist Church and uh, lead in a few areas there. Um, and, and just generally, I feel like people, when they uh, have something that they want to talk about in our community up in Chaplain, I'm one of the people that they call to talk about it to ask their opinion. And, and um, one thing I want to ask about, kind of, off top, off that top a little bit, but uh, the county owns quite a quite a bit of real estate. You know, from the the former library building here on Court Square to the uh, this little strip center out there by the Justice Center, and then the uh, the former uh, state offices out here on uh, West Stephen Foster Avenue near the Road Department. Um, do you believe the county should continue to own and fund the maintenance of those properties, or should maybe other alternatives be looked at for those those buildings? Well, I, I think it depends on what they're being used for. I'm not, a, I'm not for owning vacant property. Uh, I don't think that's a good idea. Now, vacant land's a little different because there's development potential there. Um, I think if you have, if the, if the county government owns a building that's not being used for anything, uh, it seems a little wasteful not to try to sell that t to an organization or a mm -hmm. business or someone that can use it and not only take the maintenance burden off of us, but then that would be one more... Uh, uh, business or organization that comes into Nelson County or expands in Nelson County. Um, I know the, the I, I think I know the one that you're talking about next to the government center mm -hmm. senior, uh, is senior being building. used for the senior center. Mm -hmm. um, and they do a few different things there, I think, with them. And that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think that's at all a waste of, of uh, resources there um, because again just like the, with the youth stuff you're providing you, you, a service you have to have those things for people right, right. We, we need to take care of uh, as much as it is our responsibility to take care of the aging in our area and one of the ways of doing that is keeping mm -hmm. them active and, and involved in things and so I don't necessarily think that's a waste of resources I, I think at some point we have to look at the maintenance cost versus building a new building or poten potentially using a different building mm -hmm. those kind of things um, and so it would be on a case-by-case -case basis, but just owning vacant land just because we've had it and we don't want to sell it or don't want to get rid of it, or I'm sorry, vacant buildings, I don't think that's a good use of our, our resources. Uh, gotcha. So supporting these community services to the population. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and, and again, that's one of those things where um, it may not be a legally obligated way to, uh, to do it, but it's morally. We're morally obligated to take care of them um, Right. Now, we have to do so financially responsibly. We have to do that within our means, and it goes back to where we are with our, our local economy. And if we're doing well, then certainly we need to spend some of that money on taking care of our, uh, our citizenry and uh, returning it back to them in those forms, either through actually owning that building and sponsoring that, that center mm -hmm. or uh, encouraging someone else to do that as, a, as an industry. Okay. We're going to take uh, another quick break. We'll be back with more Bradford and Brooks right after this. Right. Hey, 
and good morning. Welcome back to Bradford and Brooks. Milt Foley in here with you, standing in for Jim Brooks this morning. Got the, uh, the uh, incomparable uh, Margie Bradford in the studio with me this morning. I just completely had a, a, a brain derailment. Well, I derailment. just called you Jim while ago, well, so you the hell we're even now. <laughs> Perfect. All right, we got uh, John Snow in the studio with us this morning. Of course, he's a candidate for the uh, Magistrate uh, District 5 race, which uh, is being left, uh, that seat, I guess, is being left open by uh, uh, Eric Shelburne's, I almost forgot Eric's name too, uh, Eric's decision to run for judge executive. Yes. So one way or the other, we're going to have a new uh, new magistrate in uh, yeah. in District 5 come 2023. Correct. And you hope it's going to be you. I hope so. So with that, I mean, we, well, actually, we'll, we'll save that one for just a few minutes unless you have another question you want to ask her. No. You know what? Let's just go straight for the jugular All then. Right. Let's end this one out <laughs> in style, Mr. Uh, Mr. Snow. So, we, uh, of course, political parties really don't mean a whole lot for the most part. So, you know, you're, you're right now you're talking to Democrats, Republicans, Independents. Why should that voter out there, why, why should each voter out there vote for Jon Snow? What's your message to them this morning? Well, first I would say the political party matters right now. Uh, well, because I'm in the midst of a primary, and so I'm, technically true. I'm only speaking to the Republicans at, at, at the moment. Um, but certainly uh, I won't be able to get elected just on the Republicans in Nelson County, uh, and I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to. I think whoever gets that seat needs to, to represent uh, all of District 5 uh, and not just those that share similar political views with them. Um, so I would say the reason that I would say you should vote for me is that I have a proven track record of work. Uh, I'm a very hard worker uh, with the sheriff's department for many, many years. If there was a case open, and most of the people that worked with me would tell you that there were very few times where I would go home leaving work undone if I had a case going on. I would work uh, tirelessly uh, 70, 80 hours a week to try to get that, that case until we just hit a, a stone on it where we couldn't move forward with it without waiting on things like lab reports and things like that. So so work has never been an issue for me. Uh, being that I have retired from the Sheriff's Department and I'm now self-employed, uh, well, kind of work for my wife, but uh, <laughs> I'm self-employed um, technically. So th I think with that, I can work the, the part-time magistrate position because they are part-time positions, um, more like a full-time job. Uh, because I can flex my schedule, I can move my uh, my personal business around to be able to go and talk to people, I can field phone calls while I'm working, which isn't necessarily the case with everyone. Uh, understandably, you know, people that have a nine to five, their bosses really don't want them talking on the phone to, uh, for other business when they're doing that. And so, so I have that availability to be able to do that uh, and to be able to go out and take a look at something if somebody calls me about a road or uh, another uh, physical situation needs to be looked at. Um, and then the other part I would say is I do have a lot of, of experience uh, working in local government uh, and working not, not for the, the fiscal court, but with the fiscal court uh, with regard to the budgeting and things for the sheriff's department. And so uh, I think that will definitely help moving into this uh, potentially uh, turmoilous time as we switch government, uh, as we have a fairly sizable turn up for a small local government. And of course, it is an interesting time where I guess you can kind of say we're coming out of a pandemic. I think we're coming out of it. Well, we're we're hanging around in there somewhere, yeah, something um, like that. So we, we've still we're, we we've got that. Of course, the uh, the economy, inflation, gas prices, war in Ukraine. It's uh, it's an interesting time. It's a very it interesting is, time. And, and I think it will be even more important for the government leaders, uh, not just nationally and statewide, but locally to be level-headed, to think things through, and to try to be creative about how they manage the local government uh, in order mm -hmm. to best serve the citizens of that, of that government. Because that's really what it's all about. It's about serving them. And along those lines, and, and I spoke with a, a good friend of mine, I believe it was just yesterday, and we were kind of talking about elections and so forth. And uh, I believe he had spoken to someone, and they were like, eh, I don't vote in... I don't, I don't mess with the local elections. Yeah. Why is that important? Why should someone make sure that they go vote, however they vote, but why should they go vote 
at yeah, his local that, elections. I've gotten that a couple of times actually as I've been out going door to door. Uh, a couple of people, not n- not rudely, they're they're just you know stating that they they don't vote in local elections. Uh, and my question, one one of them actually in in, in his honesty said, I don't vote in local elections because I don't know anybody. Uh, apparently, he lives in Louisville and just or he lives here, but he works in Louisville and a lot of his uh, social activities and things are in Louisville, so he doesn't really know anybody here. And so my question back to him was, well, do you really know the state people that you vote for? Mm-hmm. Do you know the national? I mean, I, there may be a few people, you know, mm-hmm. in Nelson County that know Mitch McConnell personally or Brett Guthrie or Thomas Massey or Rand Paul or any of those people that represent us on, on the in Washington. None of us know President Biden that I'm aware of. Now, there could be an outlier there somewhere. Um, but I always my, my dad always told me that you – have an obligation to vote when there's an election you have an obligation to vote because that is your way of putting your approval on that government that's that's being installed and so even like i said I, i've encouraged several people that said they won't vote for me well it's fine vote if, if the if the citizens of district uh, five don't want me as their magistrate i'm okay with that um but don't let it be because you didn't go out and let your voice be heard uh, I think it's I think it's more important to vote in local elections because that is mm-hmm. where it more closely affects your life and your mm-hmm. way of life. Uh, and so uh, that's what I would say to somebody that says they don't vote locally. I, and I, it, and your, it's uh, your best opportunity to make sure that your vote yeah. stands for something. Exactly right. I mean, you, that's where you can make the most difference. Your voice is being heard right, right here. That's right. Not among millions and millions of people that, that voted in the national election. Excellent. Yeah. Love it. Well, Margie, thanks for letting me sit in with you today. It's been fun. <laughs> thank you it guys has for been having fun. me. Yeah, I appreciate no, thank, it. Thank you for, thank you for coming in did, today. Even if I did forget your name. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> it does happen. But, uh, it, it, it's been great in here. I believe Jim will be back next week. Yes, he will. He'll be back in with yes, Margie. And, and uh, next week we will be having... David Call, who is a Democratic candidate in District Three, yes. will be our guest next week. That's out in my district, so yeah, there you go. I'll be, I'll be, be instead of instead of uh, hosting, I'll be on listening yes, next, you next week. So, again, John, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for letting me sitting with you, Margie, and thank you for listening and watching this morning. Jim will be back next week as Jim and Margie welcome David Call in the studio. Until then, stay with us. We've got news from NBC coming up here at the top of the hour, followed by a look at your local and state news, along with your forecast. Of Obituaries and more. I'll add more. Coming up right here on WBRT AM 1320, 97.1 FM, 1320 AM, 94.9 FM, and of course online, WBRTCountry.com. Again, stay with us. News from NBC is coming up next here on WBRT.